What would you do if your boss was so dumb? You may have a boss that's an idiot. Your boss goes off the handle sometimes. Your boss is slow to make decisions. Your boss is micromanaging. All these things are true. You might have those bosses. Here's what's awesome about what we're talking about. So many questions we get and so many challenges we get from people are challenges with their boss. And the question that was asked to me, which is why this was so interesting, was that it was posed to me that said, hey, what would you do while you were in the Marine Corps if your boss gave you a set of orders that would get your people killed? That's how this question was phrased. Yeah, which is there, which is, uh, I've, I've been asked the same question. Totally. Yeah, but what are you doing? If they're telling you to do something. So this is a common question and it's a common question what is it, a straw man, right? It's a mm -hmm. common straw man question. Well, what would you do if you were telling, being told to do something that was gonna get everyone killed? Okay, I'm gonna let you continue, but that's a straw man question. It's totally. a straw man setup of, well, what would you do? Because everyone thinks that their boss is telling them to do something that doesn't make any freaking sense at all, yeah. and they're freaking out about it. And like, what would you do if your boss was so dumb? When I get to answer that question, I get to say, and I've been asked that before as well, is I was in the Marine Corps for 23 years, and that never happened to me once. Now, listen, I know that has happened, and you've actually covered some of that on the Jocko podcast. We know that as a thing. Now, it never happened to me. Mm -hmm. I never had someone give me a set of orders that, based on those orders if I followed them, would get people killed. But that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It doesn't mean it hasn't happened throughout history. You've talked about that. I wrote about it, by the way. Yeah. Because this is the situation. Look, when we were told to take Iraqi take, soldiers totally. out on uh, with us on operations and they gave us a ratio of, we had to take seven Iraqi soldiers for every one SEAL that we took out, that was gonna be a disaster. That yes. could have literally gotten people killed for sure. Yeah. And what did I do in that situation? Well, what I did was wrote a email to my boss, explained the situation, and luckily, because I had built up trust with my boss over the previous 18 months, my boss was like, yeah, Jocko, don't get anyone killed. Yeah, you do what you gotta do. Of course, because guess what? My boss did not want us to go totally. out and get a bunch of people killed. My boss did not want us to take excessive risk. So go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, you, you're, you're hitting it. And, and I think why that, why that story is such a powerful story and why we get to use that as an example so well is the whole point behind that is that there is no way your boss's secret agenda with that ratio of who to take out was to get you or anybody killed. Right. There's no way that that's what it was. Or just fail fail a bunch of missions, yeah. put people at massive risk. Totally. <laughs> Set back the war effort. Back the yeah, war we're effort. not doing yeah. that over here. And so the whole point to that was, which is the beginning of this conversation was, hey, listen, I never got told in my career to do something to get my people killed. But I worked for some bad bosses. I had times where I had bosses that weren't great. Uh, you know, in my 23 years, I had the whole bell curve. I had some incredibly good bosses. I had a couple of bosses that were pretty bad. And most of my bosses are just solid guys, good guys to work for. But universal, no matter where they fit in that bell curve, my number one goal was to have a good relationship with my boss. My number one goal. Didn't matter if I thought they were the best guy ever or if I hated him. And I think you've used the phrase at the molecular level. It didn't matter. <laughs> I don't think that is my phrase, molecular level. We've but I talked like about, yeah, it's like, I hated this guy at the molecular level. Heard people talk about how much they hate their boss. And I could go from a boss who I loved and a boss that I hated and what they both had in common was I had a good relationship with both of them for the exact reason that you just described. I don't want conflict with my boss. Specifically, if I do get to a place where I do get those orders that inadvertently we're gonna get people killed, which really got us to the actual question. He said, well, how about when you know your boss is wrong? Now I started to understand, all right, this is really what's going on with this question. He doesn't really wanna know about my Marine Corps experience. He has a boss that's telling him to do things that he knows is wrong. So we're getting to exactly where you were, which is the real root of this conversation. And to me, this all centers around the biggest challenge in all this is not what your boss is asking, but how your ego was reacting to that, especially if your ego says your boss is wrong. And the first mental exercise that I think of every single time I hear something from someone that I might think isn't a good idea, the very first question I ask myself is, what does my boss want? And I'll go through this series of questions. Does my boss want us to lose money? No. Does my boss want to hurt the company? No. Does my boss want to put us behind schedule? No. And I go through all these questions. Does my boss want us to lose clients? Does my boss want to hurt our reputation? Does he want to alienate employees? And on and on and on. And the answer to every one of those questions is almost always no. That is not what your boss wants. And so just by thinking about what does my boss want, 
80 or 90% of the problems that you have just by stopping and thinking about what you, what he wants and you come up with the answer, that problem, that problem gets solved right away without even having to go through the whole exercise of he's wrong. He's this, he's that. He's trying to get me killed. Just recognizing what it is that he wants. I saw, I, I was almost, I thought you were going somewhere that I was going mentally. You were, you were, we were in the ballpark. I have one more previous question that I'm going to ask. So your question that you ask is, you know, what is, what is it that the boss really wants? That's the question that you ask when your boss. So if my boss tells me to do something that doesn't make any sense, I, that my second question is probably that my first question is probably what am I not seeing? How am I wrong? This is when, when somebody tells me something that doesn't make sense to me, I don't think they're an idiot. I don't think that they don't understand the world. I think there's, I, I want to check myself first because there's a decent chance. My boss has been dwelling on this. My boss has been looking at the studies. My boss has been running the numbers. There's a bunch of things that my boss has been doing. He's been gathering information from a bunch of different sources. There's a really good chance that I don't actually know. And by the way, this also includes my peers. So if Dave's my peer and Dave comes in and says, hey, here's how I think we should execute this mission. My instinct is that Dave has been looking at this for a while. My instinct is that Dave has probably probably reviewed this with the intel officer that he's talked about it with his platoon and he's coming to me with a pretty good idea and there's something that I don't understand and also if Dave is my subordinate and Dave comes to me and says hey I looked at this project that we want I looked at this form of marketing and I think we should put a bunch of money behind it my instinct isn't oh Dave is an idiot my instinct is oh Dave is actually coming to me his boss and he's presenting me with an idea did he come with this idea half cocked and he's not really, he didn't do any research. He didn't look into it. He doesn't have any numbers to back it up. No, my instinct is actually, oh, it doesn't make sense on the surface to me right now. Cause that's probably cause I'm personally uninformed. Yeah. I think that reveals the core of this question and the core of the question we get all the time, which is the instinct is if you listen to your ego, your ego actually tells you your boss is an idiot. That's what <laughs> ego is whispering to you. So if you ask me a question that doesn't make any sense, my instinct, if I have a fragile ego and I don't have a good relationship with my boss, if I actually have a bad relationship with my boss, what my ego is going to tell me is he's an idiot, which to, exactly to your point, which we know is is not true. And so the exercise of what does my boss want is it, to me, it's a very similar way of saying what, I, what am I not hearing from this guy? What don't I understand? What is he asking me to do that I just don't fully understand for a second? Let me just think about it. And the whole point to this is that I don't need to go back to my boss most of the time. If you ask me to do something and it does, initially doesn't make sense, the resolution, nine times out of 10, I don't, even need to ha I don't even need to talk to you. If I can just sit for a minute and go, all right, hang on. Let me think about what he said. Let me think about what he asked. Let me think about what he wants. And if I can be humble in thinking about that, Sometimes I don't even need any clarity. I can go, oh, all right, hang on. I'm just frustrated. I'm mad about this, or I've got an issue over here, or I'm struggling with these things, and I'm pushing that back on my boss. If I just take a step away from my own ego and just think about what you're asking, I don't even need to go back and say, hey, let me walk me through this so I understand it. I can just think about what you're asking and know what it is that you want, and I can go execute on that. If you're sitting here thinking, oh, God, I'd like to ask a question about my boss. Well, let me tell you, the answer to the question about your boss isn't your boss. It's you. You're the answer to the question. You are the answer to the question. When your boss is doing this, that, or the other thing, the way to change that isn't to change your boss, it's to change yourself. Yes. It's to change your interaction. So just keep that in mind. And there's some people that are sitting here right now like, well, yeah, but in my case, okay, so cool. What do you have the, have you figured out some hypnotism way to sneak into your boss's house at night and change their personality? You can't do that. You can't do that. Your boss goes off the handle sometimes. Your boss is slow to make decisions. Your boss is micromanaging. Your boss, you, you name that problem, it's who they are. And listen, can you over a campaign of years get someone to kind of morph their personality and change and trust you more? Sure you can. But as far as what you're gonna do tomorrow during the meeting, you can change your actions. You can't change your boss's actions tomorrow. So we focus on ourselves. That's called ownership. Yeah. All right. Well, that's, I mean, that's spot on. And obviously the connection ownership is embedded in everything we talk about. So I think the instinct when you are frustrated with your boss, which is the whole theme of this, the whole point of this question in which several people ask <laughs> is the problem with your boss is you. And if your instinct is my boss is an idiot, the first thing you need to do is stop and think, is my boss, does my boss really want to hurt the company? 
And my boss's real objectives is to cause problems for me or for my people. And in almost every case, the answer is no. Now, this is one of those scenarios where I'm going to talk about that 0.001% that I hate to talk about because it's the one that everyone says, yeah, you see, this is the one. This is, which is, we'll talk about it. But let's just read because I have that at the end. Like I want to reinforce and I'm always over here on the other side. Just make sure just because Jocko's talking about the point zero zero one, it doesn't mean it applies to you. Yeah. In fact, it doesn't apply to you. There's some <laughs> other person that it might apply to. And that is, guess what? You may have a boss that's an idiot. You may have a boss that's a tyrannical maniac. You might have a boss that's an egomaniac. You, you, all these things are true. You might have those bosses. Here's what's awesome about what we're talking about. Let's say your boss is a great guy, a brilliant leader, and they present you with something and say, hey, I want you to do this. And it doesn't quite make sense. And so you say, hey, let me think through this. Hey, boss, let me just make sure, let me clarify this. And you go back to your boss and he starts to see that there's some things that should be done differently. And he says, yeah, that looks great. Go ahead. So that's, that's the course of action. You took, you took an indirect approach of trying to figure out where you were wrong, tr- t- owning the relationship. And it turns out positive. Now let's say your boss is a tyrannical idiot. And your boss, that's a tyrannical idiot, tells you to do something that doesn't make any sense. Guess what you should do? You should actually exercise the same protocol because that's how you're gonna have the best possible outcome. The worst possible outcome is to say, oh, you know what, my boss is an idiot. So your boss says, hey, I want you to do this plan. And you say, that plan is stupid, it doesn't make sense. Well, how does that work out for you? Now you have an antagonistic relationship, you're probably getting demoted, you're probably getting fired, you're probably getting overrun, you know, just over, just overwhelmed with brow beating from your boss who's gonna make you do this thing and you're gonna be miserable. So you covered it all. The whole point behind this and the conclusion of this is the biggest problem most of the time with our bosses is not our bosses at all, it's us. It's our egos that convince us they don't know what they're talking about, they don't understand, they're dumb, they don't get it, or whatever story we tell ourselves when most of the time if I just sit and think about it for a minute, I know what they want, we're aligned. We want the same things in the end, and I just go execute on it. So much better. It's so, so much, much be- easier. So much easier. So much better. And listen, I know it might sound like it's going to take a little bit longer. It might sound like it'd be better just to say, hey, boss, this doesn't make sense. Then you put kick up their defenses. You seem like a resistor, and you don't move forward in a positive way. If you want to dig deeper into all these aspects of leadership, check out Dave, me, Leif, JP, Steve, Cody, I mean, the whole team, Jamie, the whole team. Come and check us out, Extreme Ownership Academy, extremeownership.com. We're having these conversations. Like, if you heard something today and you said, you know what, wait a second, Dave, that doesn't make any sense, come on to the academy at a live session and ask us these questions. 